Hello and welcome to LearnDigitalDesign.com. This will be a continuation of a series we're doing on learning to create an avatar image. If you haven't seen the previous tutorials, you need to uh, back up and go view those first. Uh, you can find them on our website at www.LearnDigitalDesign.com. Once we have it appropriately placed, we need to add a gradient to it. But we're going to use a circular, a radial gradient but we're going to need to edit the gradient first. It's not so simple because we don't want it to radiate out and get more transparent as it moves out. We want it to get more saturated with color as it moves out. So we're going to go into the gradient editor and reverse the transparencies. If you need to see how I did that again, you can just back up the tape a little bit or back up the video a little bit but uh, notice when we have our gradient selected here look at the top up there by where it says change over to the right and go to edit then you can edit the different levels of the gradient and just reverse the transparency from one side to the other on uh, on both of them and now instead of getting more transparent as it moves out it gets more saturated with color so it gives us the effect that as we get closer to the edge of the face it gets darker and I'm still not quite satisfied with the way this looks so I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna create another object directly here on the canvas now I'm not working from the model at all and I'm gonna create another object that's gonna surround the edge of this object and what this is going to do is I'm going to use this to soften the edge and no we're not going to use blue we're going to use a sample here from from the uh, canvas and uh, play with the opacity a little bit and get it about where we want it and then once we throw a blur on there it's going to make it appear that it just softens around the edge of the face and softens into a dark darker area uh, around the edge instead of just being this abrupt line around the edge of the face because that's not going to work okay now we of course have those two areas up there that are sticking out above the hair so we're going to page down those into uh, yeah there we go that looks good right there so we've moved that object down below the hair and a lot of the other objects as well we're going to get a sample here for the eye socket color and we're going to move it down with page down as well you're going to need to master moving things up and down throughout their position uh, page up page down moves things up and down one layer or I can't say layer because we're not using layers here but you can move them up one or down one throughout the uh, above or below of the other objects and if you use home or end that's going to move it all the way to the top or all the way to the bottom home being all the way to the top and end being all the way to the bottom so now we've got both of those uh, colored in for the sockets there and uh, we're going to grab our let's go ahead and get rid of those lines around the edge sometimes you're going to need to get rid of those blue lines as you go so you can see what you're working with and uh, darken that in remove the lines and now we're going to have to use a uh, gradient and a blur this time when we use the gradient notice that even though we're looking at something more or less linear here I'm going to use a radial gradient and it's just because I believe that would be what looks best here and I have more control over a radial gradient than I do over a linear gradient in the way that it um, it appears so we're gonna get that probably about right there that's looks about right to me and then we need to slap on a little blur maybe there we go and now instead of looking like just this ugly object it looks more like 
a shadow on the side of, of her nose. Let's clean up the model a little. You don't want to let your model get cluttered with all these objects or the face on the canvas either. Uh, once it starts getting cluttered, it gets hard to work with, so don't let it get cluttered. Doing the same thing with this side, radial gradient also. And looks good probably about right there. Of course, we'll need to remove the strokes to kind of see if it, if it's exactly right. And it looks good to me. And we'll clean up the model. Grabbing the object on the temple now and getting a sample from the model. gradient and here's something you need to watch out for I'm about to make a mistake here on purpose all right okay look I grabbed that and now I'm gonna try to change the color what what happened well it it automatically thinks that you want to change the color of what it proceeds into instead of being transparent it's going to be a gradient into that color so you need to be careful and make sure you've selected the uh, something besides the gradient tool in order to start changing the colors around or go to the gradient editor and then you can which I've done here and edit each color individually for each gradient or each stop within the gradient stops represent the different colors within a gradient you're gonna need to go back into our uh, gradient tutorial to really understand that um, I do recommend that for this tutorial, of course, that you have watched our other tutorials, but it's not necessary. I'm, I'm trying to create a comprehensive video here, and uh, since I'm not doing any fast forwarding or cutting, I've got plenty of time to talk and explain as we go along here. And if you're kind of wondering why I'm not doing any cutting or fast forwarding, well, I think there's enough of that already on the internet. There are hundreds and hundreds of videos out there where the creator of the video just does some kind of speed uh, fast forward deal where he shows what he's doing and really it's not good for much more than inspiration well I'm gonna get more back onto that let's talk about what we're doing now we've got this uh, shine here on the eye and <laughs> these shines are something that are really going to make or break your drawing or your design here. You can't just have shadow. You have to have areas where light reflects as well. Uh, I went ahead and added the um, dark areas above the eyes there if you didn't notice and it I didn't mean to skip ahead on you but I forgot to press the play key or the record key when I cut a second ago but uh, no big harm all I did was sample the color from the model but back to what I was saying I mean you could probably find a tutorial where someone did a 16th chapel type painting all in speed painting and uh, it didn't teach you anything it just shows you somebody painting something really really fast and fast forward and yeah it might be good for inspiration but it really isn't good for teaching so uh, the purpose of this tutorial series really is to show you how to do this type of stuff without any fast forwarding or cutting so that you don't feel like I'm doing something behind the scenes that you can't see uh, I want you to understand that I'm showing you the full deal here <laughs> 